Hey, hello everyone, and welcome to another in Rallyware's ongoing webinar series. Today, we're going to focus on performance enablement and how that concept can be optimized to affect a any large sales force, right? And I'm very happy and excited to have with me today my colleague, Dan O'Mara. Dan is the Vice President of Sales here at Rallyware. So, Dan, thanks for uh, coming on and having a conversation this afternoon. <laughs> thanks, Rich. Appreciate it. Thanks for including me on uh, this, uh, this webinar today. Like you had a choice? Uh, I mean, okay. <laughs> All right. But before we get started today, a couple housekeeping details. Um, we will be recording today's session. And all of you will receive a link to that recording. And at the end of Dan and my conversation, we are going to open it up for questions and answers. So as you, we are going through the presentation today and you are thinking about that, just go ahead and add that or put that in the Q&A area. We've got people watching that. We'll pick those up. We'll address those once we get to that point in our conversation. So, all right. What are we gonna talk about today? Performance enablement. So as we do though, I'd like to set some, um, a bit of a landscape for that, right? So we're in the first quarter of 2023. What is 2023 gonna look like for all of us out there, right? So let's talk about some Salesforce trends that we're seeing there, and then we'll jump into some actual business cases and see how you know, you might be able to address some of those trends that are coming about. So as we look at the trends from the end of last year, beginning of this year, um, we see that productivity growth has slumped to its lowest point since 1947. That's from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. So our workforce, our sales force, is getting less productive across the board. So although there are some competing theories on why that's happening, it is a fact. We don't maybe necessarily know why, but it is a fact. And so as we look at retail, retail sales slid in November, December. Think about that. That's the holiday selling season. That's when we're supposed to be making hay out there, right? And we didn't even hit retail did not even hit the NRF projections for holiday sales. So at the same time that those sales were slumping out there, inventories rose across companies. So if you think about that, we've got bigger inventories. We're not selling it out there. We all know how that's negatively impacting our bottom line. So what do we predict in retail for 2023? We don't know what we don't know, right? So that's, it is very uncertain of what's going to happen out there this year. How can we address that anyway? So that's a little bit about the retail space. Let's talk about the direct selling space. So in direct selling, we know that digitalization is still lagging behind those global platforms out there. So we've seen some progress. But those global gig platforms, they're crucial to making those people successful, right? Whether that's Uber, Lyft, VRBO, all of that. One place where my phone can tell me and help me be successful in my business. So you notice here, we are sort of addressing a dual audience. So we're talking a little about retail. We're talking a little bit to the direct selling space because that's our audience out there. If you would look at the attendee list today, I was all excited. So you see all these brands you know and love, right? You see Ikea, you see Bed Bath & Beyond, you see Petco on the direct selling side, where Amway is here, Herbalife is here, Natura, Belcor, people like that. So think about that, folks. We've got this audience. Everybody's interested in this topic. How do we prepare to be successful in 2023? So what we're going to talk about today is performance enablement. And Dan and I will probably, we should pause right here, Dan, and talk about what actually performance enablement is. But before we do that, just know that our focus today is going to be on 
salespeople, right? Whether that's your frontline employee, whether that's an independent distributor out there, it's the people who are selling. Because as we will talk about, a performance enablement platform can affect any performance. Maybe I'm sitting in a call center. Maybe I'm in a, a warehouse. So whatever performance you want to affect, that is really what a performance enablement platform can do. Dan? Yeah, I think, Rich, you've kind of, you know, hit the nail on the head when we start talking about performances is that, you know, when we start when we start talking about enabling performance, we have to be able to track that performance. So when in any of those elements um, that we are looking to drive that performance, it's a great place to start. And, and this kind of leads us to our first point here. What is that next phase of digital transformation? You know, one of the first initial phases was, you know, just moving things from offline to online, you know, moving manual training manuals to to online uh, training capabilities, um, starting to introduce POS data into some of our operating decisions um, other than, you know, what our traditional approach was. Um, And I think really moving into that next phase, we start talking about performance enablement platforms as a whole, is to start to say, okay, how can we, how can we start to really grab this data from all over the place and really start to help drive the enablement of our team members? Um, you know, go ahead, Rich. I was just going to stop you so that the audience knows performance enablement platforms. That's a relatively new term in the industry, right? So all of us have come through historically learning management systems, learning experience platforms, engagement platforms, sales enablement platforms. So this is, you know, this is a relatively new term on what we're talking about today. And that's why I think it's very important, as Dan is saying, this is the future of digital for your success. Yeah. And I think you call it out really well, Rich, in in your slides here. When you're talking about the traditional platforms really was do this because we tell you to do. And, you know, the idea behind, you know, the idea behind performance enabling platforms really is do this because it benefits you. Um, and in this case, when we're talking about Salesforce, you know, we can start to impact, start taking into consideration people's goals and objectives and their personal involvement inside of the activities. And then you can start to merge together corporate goals along with personal goals. And um, and now these activities that they're doing or or these suggestions of of actions that um, the platform's helping them drive is really there to benefit corporate, but also benefit them um, at at the same time. Yeah, that's I wanted, I'm glad you clarified that because it made us sound like, oh, you know, it's only going to benefit. No, it's twofold, right? It benefits us as corporate, bottom line. It benefits me as that individual employee, distributor, or whatever. So as we go into this presentation today, we want to start by focusing on business performance and talking about the digital architecture that underlies that. And to do that, we're going to use a couple specific business cases, right? Remember, again, any performance you want to enable, that's what a PEP, P-E-P, you'll see that acronym we're using here, a performance enablement platform can, if you want to think about it in a negative connotation, it's actually behavior modification, right? But so we're going to focus today again on sales performance, right? And three very different companies and requirements for their sales team. So Dan, I'm going to let you go ahead and, you know, sort of outline the first business case we've got to share with them. Yeah, thanks, Rich. And I think this is a great one because this is one where we're taking, you know, a traditional retail operations furniture retailer um, and one where maybe we're really educating the buyer when they come in, so maybe it's a high touch sale. And we need to be able to support those uh, floor representatives, the sales reps, in the best possible way. And in this particular use case, you know, they're, I think they're kind of a, in, in a way ahead of where a lot of organizations are, but, 
but still, there's still a lot of room to grow. And in this particular case, you know, the, the reps are able to walk around with, with a tablet in hand, but in that tablet, they're dealing with like eight different tools and none of the tools talk to each other. So say, for example, Rich walks in and he's interested in this beautiful brown couch that we see there in the picture. And recliner, recliner with a drink holder. For sure, for sure. <laughs> the uh, so as the rep is working with Rich on this, the the rep really has to enter multiple different s- systems. One has to go into the product information to understand the product and help answer questions that that Rich has. Um, but also they have to go jump into a whole other platform to even find out has has Rich bought anything from us before? What type of behavior does Rich have with us? Uh, what kind of customer is Rich with us? And because all of this information is so siloed, um, it's it's really hard for that for that rep at that moment to stay completely engaged with Rich in the conversation because of the fact that they're transferring and going from from one place to another to another to another. Um, and then, heaven forbid, Rich not buy at that moment. Um, when Rich leaves the store, um, you know, he's like, hey, look, I really like this, um, but I have to go. I have to go host a webinar. And um, and and uh, but I'll be back. You know, really, unless that sales rep at the time grabs out his business card real quick, writes down Rich's telephone number and calls him the lack of interaction past that point stops. So, you know, being able to provide all of this into a single user experience where all of this information comes together really does help that organization um, as a whole. So I guess that's the first business case, Rich. That is, that's the first business case. And just for you direct sellers out there, because I had to learn this, (laughs) clienteling, That's what we do in direct selling, right? It's that one-on-one relationship with the customer. I, as a frontline employee, talking to the customer. Our distributors do clienteling all the time. We just don't call it that. So, all right, Dan, here's a couple of those salient points I think that we need to talk about in this first business case. Yeah, I think you may have already addressed most of them, but I just wanted to call them out. I think it's important here is the unified system for tools, right? I mean, again, if I'm if I'm in one platform, even though I'm on the same tablet, if I'm in one platform, I have to go in the other. Do I have a simple sign-on, a simple single sign-on to get into it? Do I have to re-log in? You know, every single time we take that, uh, you know, uh, that mind away from the consumer, we're we're losing that engagement. So again, unified enablement tools for single. Uh, work experience. Um, one would save company a tremendous amount of revenue. It's our a tremendous amount of money, resources by being able to consolidate something into a single tool. Um, one of the other things too is is that, and we'll talk a lot about this today, is that when we're able to consolidate tools, we're able to consolidate the experience and provide a better experience because again, that data lives in a smaller, smaller uh, area so that we can use that data better to provide a better experience. Um, So again, as you can see, you realize more Salesforce value by driving that behavior that's necessary. Again, if I've got too many apps to go into, maybe I never even go find what kind of a, a customer rich is. Um, and maybe I don't realize that, um, you know, that that Rich is a, is a great customer. He's got four rental houses he's in all the time uh, buying new new furniture for those houses and things. So, ag- again, we really want to provide that great experience for that. Uh, for that. So a- as you picture this, this is sort of that, like Dan said, that centralized user experience, that one stop shop to help me be successful. I don't care where the information is coming from. So. Think about this picture as we go to this next slide. Now, this is how it works. This is the power of any performance enablement platform. So this is where you start to visualize wherever that data resides. It may be in the HR system. It may be in the CRM system. It may be in the sales performance system. It may be in the personnel evaluation system. Here again, 
wherever it's important to get that information for me, who I am, what my role is within the organization. That's what we're talking about here. And it makes it even better. One thing we forgot to address about this. Yes, I can have a central place where I can come to and find information, right? I still have to figure out what to do with that information. Now, how does this platform in an intelligent way proactively tap me on the shoulder and say just what Dan did? Hey, Rich has got four rental houses. He's been in here six times in the last two months. This is, I mean, think about how that informs my clientele with Rich in that scenario that Dan was just painting. Absolutely. And, you know, I think, you know, I don't want to take away from the other use cases that we're, <laughs> that we have coming up, but I mean, ultimately, again, we take into someone's personal goals, where are they at towards those goals? That's a, that's an element for the product to understand. What is important for the company to sell right now? And again, right. So, uh, you know, so what promotions are occurring right now for the company that we need to make sure that 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 product's going out the door? How do we merge those two things and then provide the next step, which is now that customer and uh, identify who that customer is we need to sell that to? Again, bringing back in that element of um, really right action, right person, right time. All right. So. Full transparency, disclaimer, this is not a commercial, right? Yes, you all know out there that Rallyware is a performance enablement platform, right? That's not why we're here today. We're here to talk to you about performance enablement platforms and the value of that technology and what it can bring to your business and what it can bring to your employee or sales force. So some of these PEP in action slides are just from, you know, some sandboxes that we have, just so you can get that feel for how does that one-stop shop look when you're interacting with a performance enablement platform. Yep. All right. As we start looking at some of these ideas, some of these takeaways, some of these points that Dan's talking about, okay, that's what we're going to jump into now sort of that what's that personalized user experience and then that real-time KPIs for me, the individual, and for me, the company, right? So business case two for all of you direct sellers out there. We've got a, a company out there, over 500,000 distributors. As you can see by that first bullet point, things that you are all familiar with, right? What do we want to affect? What performance? We want to improve retention. We want to improve engagement. We want to increase sales. So that's what we're talking about here, how we went from multiple, multiple systems that I have to go to and look at, whether it's a back office, a CRM system, a document repository, whatever that might be, how do we bring that together and help me as that independent consultant to be successful. But more importantly, here again, if you can't measure it, Dan's talking about data, he's talking about numbers, he's talking about if you can't measure those results, you shouldn't be utilizing whatever the platform is that you're utilizing today because you are running blind. So. Dan, any other comments on, I mean, you know this business. Yeah, no, I think it's uh, going right into takeaways, I think is going to be critical. So okay. I'll let you go ahead. Yeah, and I think one of the things that, again, when we're talking about direct sales, we're talking about frontline employees, you know, what we're constantly talking about is how can we get people to do the right action in what short period of time they have available? Um, you know, whether it's my own personal time or I'm being paid for that time, we, we know that that time is, is limited with all the activities that people have to do. So um, smart to do activities are absolutely critical for us when, um, you know, when we're going throughout our day. So if I'm going to spend time on something, 
is what I'm going to spend time on. Is that worth it to me? And is it worth it to the company? And in a lot of cases, how much time is lost because people are trying to figure out what to do, um, you know, and by supporting them with these smart to do activities just in the right time for them. One, we get to point them in the right direction on what they have to do and save them time for how to figure it out. But but two is, is that because you have that single user experience, you're now providing them that activity, possibly that training that's necessary to do that activity and the contact in which to do that activity with all in one seamless, uh, one seamless approach. Um, again, I think that kind of talks to the smart notifications. But you know, you make a, you make a good point there. It's that just in time. So think about it. If I'm a, a retail frontline employee, it's in the flow of my business day. I see Rich walking in. I remember his face. What it, you know, it's that kind of thing. For you direct sellers out there, I will call it those in between moments of the day, right? You've got somebody who is probably not working for you full time. You're lucky if you get a couple hours a week out of them. How can we optimize that time to help them be successful in their business? Dan, you always talk about cognitive overload, right? That's that's one of your pet phrases. So that, you know, how is it as simple as possible for me to be successful either in my business or in my occupation out there? Absolutely, Rich. I think that's a really good point. Um, and, and so I think this kind of calls out more this this uh, pep and action slide here is, is that maybe we're incentivizing somebody again, congratulating them, help encouraging them to do something else. So uh, this ties in with a with an incentive program that that's operating and, and it gives them a quick alert. Hey, this is where you're at. Congratulations. And then takes them right to the place where they can see that visualization of where they're at. And then from that point on to the actions to help them increase their, their activities. Yeah. And as we're looking at that leaderboard, that leaderboard can portray anything, right? You may be competing against people for my um, average quality score in a call center. It might be the points I'm acquiring by learning more about the product. It may be the amount of sales I'm actually selling this month. So here again, what are those behaviors we want to affect? That's what a performance enablement platform allows you to do. All right. Before All right. we get, before we get to this, I, I just want to again say, you know, here's where I want to go back to what we were talking about at the beginning. Performance enablement, any performance you want to affect. Today, we're talking about sales and think about it. Very, very different sales use cases that we are presenting today. The furniture store, the direct selling company, and now a highly intense and complicated sale, right, Dan? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so again, you know, this is where you start to you know, see this a different approach, right? So in this use case again of another uh, rally where customer is is that you know a large technology organization has a complex sales process um and at the same time a tremendous number of sales reps so there's a lot of places for sales reps to just kind of chill out and kind of hide in the weeds if you want to say <laughs> and and again, what we, what we want to try to do is help motivate and encourage and drive and, and really kind of lift everybody. So, you know, performance enablement can take a look at any possible thing. So like in this specific use case, what we're looking at here is um, kind of stages in the deal funnel and how can we impact and motivate and then drive people to different, different stages in the sales funnel. Um, also at the same time, dealing with partners. So again, um, th this organization does a really good job with partner enablement. And so what they do is they utilize a performance enablement platform to help them um, kind of get their partners uh, involved by one, providing great incentive activities for them to be involved, um, two, provide them with their next activities, very easy activities for them to do to, uh, to drive that partnership um, and to reward them for, for those activities. Um, so this is a great business case outside of retail, outside of direct selling, 
you know, into the, the tech space. So I think one of these things that it calls out really is, is that, you know, the idea behind performance enablement can impact, you know, many different areas. And that's how we have to kind of think about this is, is that while we are talking primarily about sales today, what other areas of my business can performance enablement really help impact, drive, and really provide a better employee experience? Because employees, you know, they've got a better understanding of what their job is. They have a better understanding of what activities they need to do. Okay. I'm going to go completely off script here. Sure. How, surpri- how surprising, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so um, here you're talking about, though, you were just talking about incentivizing the different parts of that sales funnel for this complex right. sale deal, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, now take that. Let's talk to our direct sellers out there. This is uh, this is very powerful in a performance enablement platform, what you can do with your incentives out there, right? So think about that, folks. All of us for decades have been hanging that carrot out there, that trip to Cancun, that whatever it might be, knowing that your top 1% to 2% are always going to get it. What can you do to move the middle? So, Dan, maybe you want to talk about that a little bit because I'm telling you, indirect sales, that ability using performance enablement is invaluable. You know, Rich, I really, really like this topic, actually. Um, I think one of the the best things about this topic is, is that when we want to align an incentive program and we're saying, hey, look, okay, go do these activities, enroll these people, I have this many preferred customers, so on and so forth, and we set our parameters up for that. A lot of times those parameters are set with one kind of one goal in mind, and that's to make sure we're covering the cost of the incentive trip and that we're going to drive certain things. Kind of ends at that in a lot of ways. So when you run a performance enablement platform in conjunction with an incentive program, you can start to bring in other elements of the business to kind of impact all of that. So, for example, um, because of the fact that we can, you know, the the idea is you can build those activities around, say, the comp program, and those behaviors are developing. How can you now take and put some small breadcrumbs into that? Run a small incentive program, quick two week, three week, four week incentive program, just to incentivize some activity in between those big milestones. So not necessarily we have the great big ones, but also at the same time, by being able to you know, utilize that data to drive the next activities, you can be very prescriptive on how you want to set up those incentive programs. So you know, an incentive program that says, you know, for the next four weeks in a row, sell you know, $100 or whatever. And then you can be able to very simply build an incentive program that again, breadcrumbs in between those um, those big milestones. I think that's a great way of thinking about it uh, as well. It is. And even for you retailers out there, right? Absolutely. I've got this March promotion you're running. I've got to sell so much. But also in between, as I start getting rid of some of these inventory items that we are trying to push, man, maybe I get spiffed for you just sold two of those, boom, you just sold three of those, boom, that kind of thing. So that's what we're talking about here. It's that constant engagement, pat on the back, recognition, making me feel like I'm special or part of something bigger than me, right? All right. We're sort of coming back around to where we began. So if you remember that first slide, we're talking about the landscape that we can't figure out in 2023, how are we going to address this not knowing what's going to happen, proactively address that, right? So we know we've got to do something in that digital space. We know whether we're retail and we need that consolidation for the user and company or whether I'm direct selling and I need to keep marching down that path of digitalization. So the points we want to leave you with in this final takeaway. Dan, I'm going to let you talk maybe about the, you know, we always talk about the rules and recommendation engine when we're talking to prospects and even we're talking to clients out there on helping them 
affect the business. Yeah, thanks, Rich. I think really when we start taking a look at a lot of this stuff is, is that under the hood, as the previous, uh, I think the other previous slide stated, or maybe it did a few slides ago, but the um, the the thought process here is is that you know you you're going to have all of this data coming in, and you need to be able to start establishing certain rules around that data, and then uh, from there, your recommendation engine will help understand those rules and understand what's happening with that data, and then trigger out the right actions to, to, to the right people. So the combination of those two things working together is, is, is very, very powerful. Rules engines, they've been out there for a long time. They're great, uh, a great technology, and it's a great place to kind of start, um, to start to motivate and maybe kind of start taking some initial actions. But we have all of this data available to us. So we really need to challenge ourselves to really kind of take that next step. And this is where that recommendation of the AI side of um, all of this really comes into play. And again, you know, this is where we're starting to talk about, hey, we have a surplus of inventory at this, you know, this set of stores. Here is a suggestion of an incentive program or a promotion that we can do to get that out of our store before we have to go and send it off um, you know to be to be sold someplace else. Um, and then at the same time, you know, hey, look, I've got people on my team that are getting ready to churn. Here are the suggested next activities to help them stay engaged. And so you know, as we're starting to really think about PEP and deploying mm -hmm. PEP, again, this mindset between a rules engine, and this recommendation or the AI aspect of, of making, making sense of all that data. So, so if you think about that, that, that business rules engine, right? Think about that as being very prescriptive. It might be what you at corporate lay out as my journey for a brand new employee, a new sales rep, somebody who promotes to supervisor. It may be something you lay out to give me the employee or distributor choices, right? If I want to try for this incentive, if I want to upskill, reskill, whatever that might be. But like Dan said, that AI then, so you may give me a path, you may give me choices, but hopefully that machine will optimize what that journey toward success looks like. And here again, the reason we close with these last three bullet points on this slide, whatever you're using today or whatever you're going to use tomorrow, if you cannot quantify what that is doing for the individual and quantify what that is doing for the bottom line, you should be looking for something else that you can invest in. Yes. So, we're going to leave you with two points, right? And two pictures to remember that point. So Dan was talking about this picture before, right? This performance enablement map. So I like to think about that, and we may argue on this. I like to think about this map as being my consolidation for me, the end user, right? And we talked about this already. One more, I asked Dan if he would sort of address this slide. This is sort of how I want you to think about that consolidation of tech for the organization. Because as you walk out of here today, that's the only two points I want you to remember about what performance enablement is. How it optimizes the experience for the individual, how it optimizes the spend, the architecture, whatever, the corporate bottom line for the company. Yeah. So Again, we can spend hours talking about this slide. I'll try to do my best in a short, short, shortest period of time. Again, the idea is we always want to try to drive engagement. So, um, you know, we're dealing with individuals, you know, again, whether this is a, an employee on a storefront or if it's, um, you know, a direct sales individual. We're dealing with individuals with a short period of time and with a lot of things going on. So they're not going to be just sitting every day just being inside of a platform. So what we have to do is we have to reach out to them. And this is where that engagement aspect that you see on the left side 
is, is that we're going to send messages to those individuals across whatever channels they happen to be in. And we take that data, that engagement data, the click-throughs, the opens, the actions, all of that goes back into the Rallyware database, and we merge that data with commerce data, with commission genealogy or HR data, and then also social engagement data. It's a huge piece of it. Bring all of that back in, and all of that sits with inside of a single data structure. And then you set your AI, your um, recommendation engines, sitting over the top of that. And then from there, you set up the necessary information. So in the direct selling space, maybe our AI engine is initially looking for churn. What's your lost revenue going to look like over the next 30, 60, 90 days? And here are those individuals that are going to churn. And then we're based off that information, based off the data information, that goes into the, the logic aspect of your performance enablement platform. And then from there, it triggers out the activities and actions that need to happen. So whether that's team management, uh, somebody on my team is going to churn and I need to motivate and encourage them. Uh, somebody on my, my team is not performing at a way that we really need them to perform. So we need some managerial support in this particular case. Um, a lot of times those things may introduce you to some new learnings. So we need to be able to ensure that that learning and development activity is there to support that team management aspect. Um, and then it could go on into an incentives and recognition. Not only, hey, this is an incentive, an incentive program you should run, um, but also at the same time, hey, look, I am currently in this incentive program. This is where I'm at. This is where I want to go. Here are the actions I need to do to get there. And then into CRM. So again, this is both an individual handheld CRM for you know customer acquisition, customer management, or client telling. And then from there, of course, uh, corporate CRM as well. And then all of that action lives inside of one place. So all of our reporting, all of our KPI activity, all of it sits in one experience so that we know how we can make impacts to change the overall end results that we're looking for from our um, frontline employees or our, um, or our or our field in general. All right, good job. You kept it under an hour. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. Hey, so we've got a couple questions out there from folks. Um, I'm going to use those. If you got any more, don't hesitate to put them in the Q and A. Uh, the first question, Dan, is. Um, that's interesting stuff they started with. Um, and this, you may have talked about this in that last slide. How does big data come into the picture? You think you probably address that at that point? Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, big data is a big term. So, you know, <laughs> um, you know, I think it's, you know, yeah, I mean, you have to start somewhere. So the aspect of bringing all of this data in together, Bringing it into one place, structuring it, being able to, you know, make it actionable by whatever system is, is analyzing that data and moving forward. But I think ultimately this is where that recommendation engine really comes into play and in helping structure data, helping to ensure that that data is, um, is, is easily to be made action, actionable. Um, so, yeah, it's, a, it's an important part of a, a PET platform. Okay, this one I'm not sure I have an answer for. What is the difference between performance and productivity? How would you answer that before I go down that path? Uh, I think it kind of goes back to your to the first slide. Um, I think productivity is a corporate measurement, and I think performance is a is a dual measurement that involves the employee or direct sales individual and the corporation as a whole. Um, so I, I think that, you know, productivity is how much can we get out of you in said period of time based on what we want you to have done. I think performance is, you know, taking into consideration what goals, what, what, um, what you want out of it, just as much as what the company wants out of it. That That's my that's my take on it. I, you know what? I'm going to leave that as our our answer. And uh, 
People who are open to uh, having a further discussion on that can either get rich at rallywear.com or dan at rallywear.com. So um, this next question is a very good one. And I don't know if we've addressed this enough with that tech consolidation. It said, and I don't know if this is direct selling or retail, our company is cutting back. How does this technology help cut costs? Uh, very, 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 very good question. Um, one is is that um, you know right from right from the get go, you start to say, okay, what you know we've got those we've got different elements. You have commission, genealogy, incentives, uh, uh, technology. Uh, absolutely critical, and that is something that every company, of course, has to have and manage and, and, and great providers out there for that. You have the experience in which, um, you know, or sorry, you got the e-commerce aspect. You have to have that commerce aspect. And then you have to have the engagement side, the tool side, the experience side for that, um, um, you know, for, for that rep to go into. Where I think there's a lot of bloated is in that last section. And I think there's great opportunity for reduction when it comes to, you know, how do we, how do we spin up an incentive program? Uh, how much internal tech resources does it take for us to spin it up, run it, manage it, uh, identify who the um, um, winners are and, you know, all of that type of stuff. So I think there's a lot of resources, you know, in that aspect, I think there's a lot of resources in 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 a lot of duplication of technology um, that organizations have. Um, one of the things that we do with a lot of organizations is a map and gap type approach, and we say, okay, here's what's critical, here's what is um, is nice to have, and here's really what's not needed. Where do you fit in all of this mess, and then try to bring that all together. It's a very I don't know if that quite answers it, but that. <laughs> and I'll give I'll give a first hand yeah. example, right? We've got a, a big global client at Rallyware, and they've been with us since I think January 2020. And they first, you know, saw the use of Rallyware for onboarding and training and leadership development and those that ability to drive that performance, you know, to enhance that performance. Now, recently. We've talked about, I think they've already eliminated three other platforms across their corporation, and we are targeting two more over this year. So think about that. The ability to take five existing expenditures you are doing on platforms today and get rid of that. So that's one of, you know, that's one of the ways I have seen firsthand with a big global client that we have. So the last question that I'm going to uh, use, because I think this person got the essence of what a performance enablement platform is. It says, so you are telling me that at my direct selling company, I can use a performance enablement platform to help my field, and I can use an imp the same performance enablement platform to help my internal coworkers. Yes, this is a great one, actually. Um, we, we couldn't have summed it up any better, yeah, right? Yeah, that, that one is, uh, um, the use case for that is, is tremendous. Um, when you're talking about, uh, I, I'll, I'll put it this way. When there's a common goal for the organization and you have your field going towards that common goal, and then you have your internal employees also going towards that common goal. Let's just pretend, for example, that common goal is a trip to Cancun. All of the activities that are being triggered and defined and sent off to the field are driving towards that goal. Well, we have account managers. We have um, support teams that all sit inside of our organizations and doing the same thing. They're trying to get those people excited about that common goal and trying to move them. So their performance enablement is really in line with theirs. And so, again, when those employees say log into their performance enablement, it is, hey, help this team reach this because they're this far away. 
Um, again, when that field logs in, they're saying, hey, look, you're so close to Cancun, you need to do this, 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 and this. And again, when they're all going towards the same common goal, and that same common goal is actually one of the most difficult things to get to, but <laughs> um, when they're all going towards the same goal, then the uh, employees know exactly how to motivate and support the field, and the field knows why they are being motivated and supported um, at the same time. So again, it's it's um, I, I think seeing that use case come out and seeing it across um, you know some of our customers, I absolutely love seeing when that happens because all of the activities are driving for the same goal. And I'll say even different segments of your organization, right? We're talking to a retailer right now, Athletic Apparel, and in mm -hmm. their stores, they're talking about using Rallywear to help those frontline salespeople, right? Because that's the easiest thing to affect, and that's the most people they have out there. But then they're talking about incorporating an HR and finance and whatever else that might be across Absolutely. the organization. I think absolutely, Rich. I think a good call out there is as um, allocators. Allocators are putting new product into new stores. Those stores not having that product before, um, you know, based on that data, we can trigger new um, uh, uh, trainings to those locations and also, um, uh, uh, you know, spin up incentive programs for those to, to help launch new products and things. So absolutely. Perfect. Well, Dan, I uh, we are about one minute past when I like to get these run. So I, we did well, you and me together, let me tell you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I appreciate your time. I know how busy you are. I appreciate um, the experience you bring from not only working with clients, but talking to prospects out there. So hopefully folks that this has been um, valuable from an education standpoint, just talking about performance enablement platforms, right? That it can benefit not only the individual within your organization or your sales force, but also you at corporate that way. So thanks again for your time. We look forward to sharing more and different webinars with you in our upcoming series. Have a great day, everybody. Thank thanks you, again. everyone.